people were surprised by the following, that I didn't have government. I didn't have a Manhattan Project as the star of the show for how we're going to adapt to climate change. My hero was, was Adam Smith's hero. It, it was capitalism as the star of the show. I sit at UCLA's Institute of the Environment, but at the end of the day, these are social science questions. So I have many colleagues at UCLA's Institute of the Environment who ask me, if everyone in the world achieves the American dream, if all seven billion of us have a house, have a car, uh, won't pollution just go to hell? And they're shocked when I tell them no, uh, that economic growth will actually help us to achieve the win-win of reducing poverty and improved environmental quality of life. And so I am not a climate change denier. I believe what my climate scientist colleagues at UCLA are saying, that the challenge of climate change is real and is approaching. But where I differ from my colleagues is my belief based on microeconomics that we will be able to adapt to many of the challenges of climate change because of cap free market capitalism. And so I've written the book Climatopolis, which has made everyone nuts, but it hasn't helped with book sales. Environmentalists are shocked that there's environmentalist me who believes that free market capitalism will help us to adapt to the challenge of climate change. Free market capitalism, by giving us the income and wealth uh, that, that capitalism produces, has scaled up. It has increased greenhouse gas emissions. But the same free market capitalism will help us to adapt to many of the challenges that climate change will pose. Economic growth involves both quantity and quality. So as we get richer, we do consume more stuff. We drive more, we consume more electricity. But there's also a quality effect that many environmentalists tend to ignore, that as we grow richer, we demand quality of life and we want, we want more safety. And capitalism is, is an amazingly adaptable system that when there's demand, supply will subsequently follow. And so an example, I've done some work on the death toll from natural disasters. When, when natural disasters like floods and earthquakes occur, hurricanes, it's horrible that there's death from these natural disasters, but richer nations suffer less death from the same blows that Mother Nature poses because richer people live in higher quality housing, have access to better food and better health care. And, and so income helps to shield us from Mother Nature. I think this theme is very relevant for thinking about adapting to climate change. Richer cities will adjust pretty well to climate change, but what will happen to Bangladesh? What will happen to Africa's cities? The challenge of climate change makes it imperative that there be even more economic development in Africa, because with income growth, you have more coping strategies for the challenges we're likely to face. We have many coastal cities, uh, with New Orleans with Hurricane Katrina, horrible stuff in 2005. We now anticipate that we're going to face more severe hurricanes in the future. Are we passive victims here and allow Mother Nature to punch us in the chin? No. What we're seeing entrepreneurs doing right now, and Brad Pitt is working with some at UCLA, is designing floatable homes. But we anticipate a challenge, more urban flooding. And we are making choices at several levels, how we design our future homes. A floatable home is, is an interesting concept and just one idea. But there's many other subtle heroes here. The insurance industry, raising insurance premium in risky areas, sending price signals to households to, of where to live and what materials to live in if they're in a fire zone or in a flood zone. So the insurance industry, no one's going to make a movie. Al Gore's not going to make a movie about the insurance industry. Yet I view that as a key player in sending us signals of the new risks that Mother Nature will pose to us. It's not a, a government employee giving out orders saying, don't live here, don't live there. It's the price system sending signals. And this is the rise of environmental entrepreneurs. It's not government mandated. It's not a, some top-down system with some five-year Soviet or Chinese plan. These are individual entrepreneurs experimenting and tinkering. And I, I don't need 100% of America to become environmental entrepreneurs, but I predict that if 2% of our population have this entrepreneurial streak, they will try, some will fail, but those who succeed will be our next Zuckerberg. And we collectively will be grateful to these guys.
It's important to think through unintended consequences of well-meaning government actions. So if government builds seawalls or promises to rebuild communities that are flooded, simple economics predicts that more people will locate in those dangerous areas. And so this is a classic crowding out case. If Milton Friedman were our president, and if he said, I'm going to be tough love, and I'm not going to rebuild, I'm not going to bail out anyone who's in, a, who is exposed to a natural disaster, people would have to self-protect and take actions to protect their own families. And while that tough love approach might appear to be cruel, it would have the direct effect that we'd have fewer victims because you wouldn't have the strategic game between people and their government. The proper role for government in adapting to climate change is providing high quality information. It's the equivalent of tsunami alerts so that we know the threats we face. It's common knowledge what challenges climate change will pose and then allow individuals and firms to trade with each other and to help individuals make decisions that they don't regret but then to have some faith in individual rationality and the profit motive for firms to seek out solutions to these challenges we will face. There are collective solutions. Uh, so for example, I'm a big fan of the Nature Conservancy. So, so there's environmental clubs that collect donations from green-minded successful people and use these to buy up land as private property and such carbon sequestration by protecting trees is a fine way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The incentives I want to see to help us to adapt to climate change is to allow free markets to work. Right now we don't have a free market for water pricing or electricity pricing. I want these prices to float, to reflect supply and demand, and as resources get scarce, to expose consumers to rising prices for scarce goods. You can't make a great bumper sticker for this. Maybe Reason TV could. But my unsexy bumper sticker for adapting to climate change is give free markets a chance.